with a tap. When dad booked his family summer vacation early on Verbo. Your together awaits. Book early, cancel if you need to. since Paul has been back to ride with me. So. It is supposed to rain today, but look, it's dry. All the rain chances, so. We've got our shoes covered. And so hopefully, if it rains really heavily, I'm gonna stop and put on my sleeves so I can thoroughly test my setup. But, uh, it's nice this morning. Finally gotten used to our heat. Yeah. This is a beautiful morning, man. Yeah, it's nice. This is a nice, yeah. nice morning. If it's, dead, like it's not going to warm up much. 81, 82 is the high. So it's, it will rain. Because yeah. otherwise it will be 90 or 91. So I like the rain. got our training wheels on training tires ultra sport hello media go. truth we're going to be starting in a few seconds we'll get some clips for you we're not looking we're for just doing the uh, the tour the tour the stage days, 14 we'll it was very interesting out on the road On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton. We took uh, Creekside Green, went out to Goslin, cut through the woodlands, Sterling Ridge, Branch Crossing, Research Forest. We got on fish. Welcome, J West boy. We're going to be starting in about five seconds. Neighborhood, Grand Lake Estates, Keenan Cut Off. Hello legends and super legends, welcome to Velo Harmony Live. Today's stage 14 of the Tour de France 2021 was a stage for the attackers. They left Carcassonne to Quilon. It was very interesting, let's get into it. I think you will enjoy it. It's been a long time since they ended a stage in Quilon. Uh, so they left Carcassonne, I'm gonna show you the who do we have there? Paulie Long guy is here. My brother, how are you doing? We just, we had an interesting ride today. I just got you syncing the film that Paul did. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of action going on, on this channel. So cool. So this is the map. Let's go to the route. You see all the category twos and the category threes. The cool thing about it is that this is the kind of route for people who like to attack. So if you look at the, the cold Dubak, Category three, then you go Col de Montsegur, category two. So you got all those hard climbs. And then if you look at the penultimate, the Col de Galnag, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. But the Col de Saint Louis, that's the one where the action really heated up and the stage was kind of confirmed because once you crest that, it's a downhill. And if you get enough time, you can hold people off. So it was a, it was a day for the attackers and they did not disappoint. You can see this is about, let's see, 171.8 kilometers. So like 20K into the stage. Look at what they're going through. Got riders all over the road in little groups. Attacks, attacks, attack. It took almost 100 kilometers before this race settled down. There's Omar Goldstein, Pierre Latour from Total Energy, Sean Bennett from Quebec uh, next, next Hatch. They took off early you know so it's kind of like once they got going they got they got pulled back then we had uh another group scudians rickard 
Let's see, Chevalier is on the rear, 224. So these five guys were able to establish a break, but then the peloton did not let them rest. You can see all over the road, everybody's working. I mean, you know, look at the front. The line is straight. That means the hammer is down. And so they, they, they got them back. They, they pulled everybody back in because they didn't let up until the sprint point here. These guys are still sprinting for points and so forth. After the sprint point with about 106 kilometers to go, that's when really the race started taking shape. This is the feed zone on the climb. And you got white poles from uh, Bahrain Victorias, number 66 in the red there. Michael Woods is in the front, the blue and white jersey in the front. And the guy on the left here in the Dequinic quick step jersey is Mate Mattia Catania. These three guys started the action here on this climb going through the feed zone because uh, Michael Woods and what's his name, Walt Pohl, were basically trying to get KOM points. So they... They're racing right here towards the sprint line to see who gets the point. Wapos got, got both points from the first two KOM sprint points because I guess he was isn't he's faster than, than uh, Woods. You can see he gets in front. And a lot of these guys use their heads. You can see he gets the points, but he doesn't have like a bike length or all. You don't waste your energy. You just want to get across the line in first place. You don't want to beat the guy by four bike lengths if you don't need to. Because you got a long stage and you guys saw the profile. There's a lot of climbing to go. So he just edged him and got the point that that's what it's about. This other group here, group two now, have about, let's see, three, six, seven, or eight riders. They end up catching up to those three up front. Eventually, the breakaway grew to where... We end up with 14 riders. This is another sprint point at 57.3 kilometers. Poles takes it again. He takes the KOM. Now, it doesn't mean the guy behind doesn't. He gets fewer points than whoever gets through first. So, you know, he's getting points, and that's what it's about. Even if you're not faster than the guy, you still want to be in the, the, the let's, I, I think, top two or three get points on, on these climbs. So after he takes that, Woods crashes on the descent right there. And Mattia Catania is right behind Woods and is able to avoid hitting him. You can see Michael Woods sits up. Catania ends up going to the right and into the grass to avoid hitting him. You can see him over there in the grass. Michael Woods gets up right away. He's not seriously hurt. But at this point, those guys continue on and Woods basically tries to get back. It took him several kilometers before he could get back. But by the time he got back, Baki Malama had already made his move right here on the descent. This descent is the, the descent before that final category two climb. Saint, I, I think it was St. Leon. Let's call it the Col de St. Louis is the climb that they're heading to here. So Baki Malama made the move on the downhill after the Côte de Galinag. And now they're going to the final climb before you descend to the finish in Kion. So he makes his move here. He gains like 35 seconds quickly. So, you know, I guess a lot of the guys probably thought, mm, maybe it's a, it's a suicide move or whatever because they knew that this climb is coming up. That the final climb, which is a, is a category two, but he ended up consolidating it. Now, while he's ahead, these guys are chasing him. Guillaume Martin is uh, like within five minutes, something he's basically gaining time. If you look at the yellow jersey on the top of the screen there, the yellow jersey group is five minutes, 45 seconds behind these guys. These are the guys that Bucky Malema just broke away from. So, these guys are chasing Bucky Malama. Well, what's happening now is this guy with the Kofidis team is in a position to unseat Rigoberto Uran from second place. Because with this kind of a gap on that group that Rigoberto Uran is with the yellow jersey group, this guy has gained this much time. So he's just going to move up in the classification. Quite a few riders, you know, 
moved up today. But but the team is aware with all the radio information and whatever. So what ends up happening is EF education nipple riders go to the front to try to keep that time gap down. That's their goal right here. You can see the UAE boys are there on the side, but, but EF has a reason now because the yellow jersey is not at risk because that guy was further back. And he's just in a position of where now he's moving into a podium spot. So EF is the one that needs to get to the front and basically spend the energy if they want to keep their guy in second place. Bucky Malabar crests the Col du Saint Louis. And so he's on the descent. He, this is 16 kilometers to go. It's about probably 10 miles. So 10 miles to go. He crests. He's got a minute on the, the guys behind him. Group three has a minute and a half on group four. The, the yellow jersey is five minutes, 40 seconds behind at this point. So the, the people in group two are the ones who are endangering, you know, Gillian Martin is endangering Huron. Bucky Malama is not in contention for the GC at this point. So he goes ahead, he starts the descent. This EF rider happened to be in the break. So he's not, even though he's sitting at the front, he's not going to be pouring it on that much because he knows that Rigoberto is back there and Gideon Martin is in the group behind there. If you look behind, you can't really see him that well. But this is the, the these are the chasers that, that Bucky Malama rode away from. So he's in this group. So this EF guy is just going to go through the line. He's not going to be forcing the pace or anything because he doesn't want to help these guys gain time. But they've got so much time at this point, you can see it's six minutes and seven seconds. So they, they, didn't, they weren't able to pull them back. That's the thing about the climbs and the wind. You know, on the flats, yeah, you can get the horsepower on the team going. But when you're climbing, everybody's, it's everybody for themselves. You know, hills are hard. My brother knows what that means. So with 1.3 kilometers to go, Bucky Malama starts to celebrate because he knows he's got a minute 17 gap. They're not going to they're not going to bring him back. A kilometer is like a thousand meters or 13, you know, it's just you can pretty much see the finish. He's in. You can see the the, the, the barriers. So he's in the, the, the barrier area. He starts to celebrate. He crosses the line. This is his second stage in the Tour de France, not this year, but in general, which is a big thing for a cyclist. Because that's on your Palmares. That, that affects what kind of contracts you get, salaries, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's a big thing for him. And I put the, uh, so the, the entire stage was 43 kilometers an hour was the, the average pace today. That's pretty fast when you look at the kind of mountains they were climbing. That's very, that, that's very fast. So, uh, so Bucky Malama wins with a minute four over Conrad and Higita and Catania. Catania was the guy who dodged. Michael Woods. You can see Michael Woods makes it in fifth place. You know, so he was able to get back, you know, within four seconds of those guys. But by the time he got there, this, this guy was gone. And uh, the, the, the good thing about it is that he had earned enough points. The, the, the yellow jersey group comes in at six minutes, 55 seconds behind. So that means Rigoberto Uran has lost his second place to Guillaume Martin. They were not able to keep that. So you can see on the general classification, Guillaume Martin has moved up in second place. Rigoberto Iran is in third place. So he's still in a podium spot. But you can see that Martin gained some time to where now he's within four minutes of the yellow jersey. Whereas yesterday, Iran was 518 behind. So this move that he made in that breakaway made a big difference. So we're looking for her tomorrow. They're going deep into the Pyrenees tomorrow. They're going into Andorra, the capital of Andorra. And there's, there's some serious climbs out there. So that, that's going to be interesting to see. Here is uh, the, the, the classification for the King of the Mountains. Michael Woods ends up getting the, the King of the Mountain jersey. You can see he's got 54 points. To Quintana. Quintana was not in the breakaway, so Michael was gaining a lot of points. You see, while Poles, who was racing him for those points, is at 49 points. So they're all close. That's what that's like five points between the top 
three guys, four to five points. So that you know, it's it's probably going to change hands. We'll see. We'll see. There he is in his KOM jersey. <clears throat> so it was very interesting because you got races within the race. And so with, with when you get into the mountains, it's about who can maintain or take the KOM. Also, for the green jersey, it means which sprinter or which overall consistent finisher can climb well enough to gain some points. Because just because you win the fast stages, if you don't maintain, people can overtake you. That's why Sagan was very good at winning a lot of green jerseys because he's one of the, the more consistent finishers that climbs well, decent, you know. So that's kind of, uh, you know. Yeah, so let's see here. We've got, uh, yeah, Patrick, Patrick Perez and Joyner. It is evident that UAE are the controlling of the pace of the peloton in general. Pakistan gave Ineos a stern look yesterday when they tried to take over the front for no reason. I was surprised to see that many UAE riders because they really have been missing in the climb. So it was good, you know. Yeah, the pace that they ride, yeah, 10 to 12% gradient. That's crazy, you know. They're riding, you know, 20 kilometers or more on these steep gradients. They ride a lot. So that's, you know, that's uh, crazy. So, um <clears throat> J. West said they got 70, 70 miles in today. I think we did about 80 today. It was very muggy today. It was a nice day, but it was very humid because we've had a lot of rain. And uh, But it was overall, yes, it was a very nice day. We rode. We, we enjoyed our ride. We got back around noon, thereabouts, just right around noon. That's our goal. And so uh, it was good to be able to get this highlight done for you guys. So we'll, we'll hook up again tomorrow, same time, same station, to do the, the, the stage to Andorra. <laughs> Andorra does not play. They got some serious climbs there. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to expect more shakeups in the GC. So you all take care. We're signing off. Be safe out there. And remember to get your Ks in. Oh, you're watching me? Yeah, I got this thing down. <laughs> got my little shortcuts.